Good morning. This is the Board of County Commissioners for the work session. It is Thursday, June 22nd, 2023. We're having a late start this morning due to technical issues with our Zoom. Uh, but this is a hybrid meeting. We're at 3000 Pacific Avenue Southeast, room 110. Uh, for public virtual attendance, you may follow along the Flushing County YouTube channel. We're going to be discussing the 2024 through 2025 water and sewer utility rates, and I'll pass it straight to Tim and Jennifer, and we can get started. And Yes, so Tim, go. <laughs> Very little time. <laughs> um, good, good morning, Commissioners. Tim Wilson, Water Resources Manager, Public Works. To my left, Public Works Director Jennifer Walker. To my right, Assistant Director Karen Weiss. Um, I would also like to introduce on the screen and do a sound check very quickly. Uh, we have Zach Hazel. Zach, can you hear us? How about now? <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Zach. Uh, Zach um, is a project consultant with FCS Group Incorporated. Uh, Zek and his team are prominent in utility financial planning and rate modeling and assisted with the development of the 2022 utility revenue requirement and rate modeling study uh, that the board has uh, previously been briefed on. Uh, this briefing is informational only and uh, for the sake of time, we'll roll through it uh, fairly quickly here. Uh, and, uh, and while the board has been updated recently on utility consolidation, we are here today to talk specifically about proposed rates for the 2024-2025 budget cycle, which the board would be asked to take action on later this year. And Romero, oh, you're rolling. If you can back up one, thank you. As the board is aware, the cost of planning, construction, constructing, and operating utilities is expensive. And this is especially true for smaller utilities, which must meet obligations and levels of service with a very small customer base. Utilities in general experience escalating costs in repairs, supply, supply, energy to operate the plant, staffing costs, hauling costs, and investment in infrastructure. Following the board's authorization of two separate studies focused on feasibility of consolidation and finance, financial planning for the utility, key advantages for our customer base became very apparent. Those benefits include shared planning and capital prioritization, economies of scale through rate blending, which means lower long-term rates and less volatility for our customers, cost savings via simplification of accounting, administration, and utility billing, and improve financial stability and risk reduction. Following a 2022 board briefing on the benefits of consolidation, the board was asked to authorize 2023 rate increases that were lower than most local utilities to cover O&M cost increases only, while FCS and staff develop rates following the consolidated model and move forward with the consolidation process. And we'll talk a little bit more about um, the what other utilities were doing in 2023 in terms of rate increases uh, in a couple slides. Thank you, Romero. Several factors were considered while developing the proposed 2024-2025 rates. The primary factor for recommended rate adjustments is inflation, which we have seen in all areas of our operations, from staffing costs to energy costs to contracted services such as sludge hauling. Utility-specific consumer price indexing for our region reflects a 9.1% increase for the 2021-22 period, followed by a 6.9% increase for 2022-2023. Service area growth, primarily in the Grand Mound service area, and changing uh, regulatory requirements are also driving higher costs. As combined utilities, one water, one sewer utility, the combined revenue increases needed for 2024 uh, equate to 4.25% for sewer and 6.25% for water. The recommended rates on the upcoming slides will address this requirement. We wanted to add this slide for information because it really reinforces the financial challenges of managing small and consolidated utilities. What the slide is showing us is that even with an assumed 3% annual year after year increase in rates, several of the utility funds, if left unconsolidated, 
would reach financial, financial insolvency as early as 24. And for our Tamashad and Boston Harbor communities, this model assumes either zero or less than adequate funding transfers to our capital reserve funds, leaving the systems vulnerable to failure and reliant on external funding sources. Next slide, please. Before we talk about specific rate adjustments in the following slide, we wanted to add this slide to once again demonstrate the value of fund and rate blending to our customer base. The top portion of this slide is what rates would look like in coming years to meet the growing needs of the utilities without consolidation of the funds. The bottom portion of the slide represents the gradual blending of rates over the five year period. The goal of rate blending through consolidation of the utilities is to achieve economy of scale via a larger, more diverse customer base. The blending of rates will have a positive significant impact for our communities and all customers will benefit in the long run from a large base and sharing of, of uh, financial resources. Dialing in on 2024-2025 sewer utility rates. We are recommending adjustments that are in alignment with our goal of rate blending. Sewer rate adjustments uh, are for the Tamashan utility, uh, a 3% de decrease in rates in both 2024 and 2025. For Boston Harbor, uh, we are recommending a 1% increase in sewer rates for both years. Uh, Grand Mound, 6% increases for each year and Olympic View would stay static at, uh, at their current rates. So the range of adjustments for our sewer customers would range from a reduction of 3% for Tamashan to 6% for Grand Mount. For context, the rates required under an unconsolidated model to meet the known revenue needs would range from 2% in Grand Mount to 36.99% in Olympic View and would average 15.3% for 2024 only. And in comparison to other local utilities, including Tumwater, Olympia, Lacey, and Yelm, the information we could gather shows average sewer increases of 9.9% in 2023. And you'll recall we, for some of our utilities, we had no increase in 2023, and some we did 3% increases only to cover o and and the averages for other utilities is showing a 7.75% increase in 2023. So moving to mo uh, water, I would, uh, want to demonstrate the rate blending model again. Uh, similar to the rate blending slide for the sewer utilities, uh, we wanted to add this slide to provide a long-term picture for the consolidated water utility. The top portion of this slide is what rates would look like in coming years to meet the growing needs of the utilities without consolidation of the funds. The bottom portion of the slide represents the gradual blending of rates over the five-year period. And again, dialing in on 2024-2025 water utility rates, uh, we are again recommending adjustments that are in alignment with our goal of rate blending. Water rate adjustments uh, for Tamashan, as we begin to blend those rates, Tamashan would see a 3% reduction in 2024, followed by a 4% reduction in 25. Boston Harbor would see an 8% base rate increase in 24 and an 8% increase in 25. Grand Mound would be a 7% base increase in 24, followed by a 7% increase in 2025. And again, for context, uh, the rates required under an unconsolidated model to meet the known revenue need, needs would range from 2% in Grand Mount to 45% in Tamashan and would average 18.3% in 2024 alone. And in comparison to other local utilities, again, including Tumwater, Olympia, Lacey, Yelm, and Thurston County PUD, or Thurston PUD, the information we could gather shows average water increases of 6.38% in 2023 and 5.4% in 2024. And again, there were no rate adjustments in 2023 for Grand Mound and only 3% increases for Boston Harbor, Tamashan, and Olympic View. 
So with that, the proposed next steps um, would include proposed rate adjustments in the 2024-2025 budget development process, public outreach, uh, uh, including public hearing on the proposed adjustments um, would be ramped up. The public outreach on consolidation has been healthy and is, is continuing. Uh, we have open houses scheduled back to back to back next week in all of the communities served. Um, and then a resolution adopting the rates and uh, fee schedules would align with budget development. And with that, um, would be happy to answer any questions the board may have. Thank you. Yeah. And so, Commissioner Edwards, let me get Commissioner Menser first because he has a, a meeting at 10. So, go ahead, Commissioner Menser. I'm just curious if the, um, like when you were working with the utilities on consolidation and you were probably running some numbers, and now that you've run the real numbers that were proposed, is this going to surprise anybody in terms of what they see? Is anything been different than what you were talking to them about? I don't think it will surprise anybody, but the numbers are different. Um, we have evaluated uh, true inflationary factors and built that built that in. Uh, we've built in um, uh, needed improvements within the utilities. And so to answer your question, I don't think it will surprise anybody, but we will be sharing that and providing getting feedback from those communities, from the UACs. So to the extent that the numbers are different, is there any like one number that's diff unsurprisingly different? Not proportionately. No. I mean, it's they're increased, but it's proportional, right, to and, what, the, what we were looking at before. Yeah. And, and also what we did is we applied in those inflationary factors to the non-consolidated rates. So when the communities really look at it, it's going to solidify the value of consolidation because with, with the updated truer inflationary factors, you can see that some of the, some of the communities would be hit with, you know, 45% increases and 36% increases next year. It's pretty amazing to me the just a comment the the span of you know like from 104 to 277. I mean, yeah. I, I understand people live in you know places and sometimes it's more expensive to live and but at this point those are older communities and it just seems to be out of whack. So I think I think we're really going to benefit to get that down to like a ninety dollars and one hundred twenty five standard. Absolutely, yeah. It's just it's such a challenge to think about. You know, these are. Think about Tamashan as an example. They they are very very small customer bases, trying to operate two, you know, a water uh, plant and a, a wastewater plant. And uh, even though they are small, they are expensive to run. So this is this is going to be uh, very advantageous to the utilities going forward. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Edwards. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, by any chance, Tim, did we get that history uh, statement of why we're involved in this? Uh, yeah, yes, sir. We have uh, incorporated that language into the posters and the information that we are sharing at the upcoming open houses uh, to provide the, the customers with background. Uh, as, as you pointed out before, they they may not be aware of that. So just how uh, Thurston County uh, came to be managing utilities in their communities. And we will incorporate that in any uh, narratives uh, for board action as well. And it's part of the upcoming public hearings. So all that information is Correct. Has been provided be to the public. will be provided as a handout. Is it uh, a couple public hearings coming up related to the consolidation? Correct. That's what Tim said. Any of the narrative for any board actions would be included. Yes. Could could uh, the board get a copy of that, please? Yes. I think that's it for me, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, so my questions got asked, so I don't really have any follow up from those. So with the proposed next steps. Um, is there a decision that we need to make today? No, no decision. Or is this informational? No, this will be part of your regular public hearing related to the okay. overall revenue uh, on the budget process that's usually being held in November. And the uh, final action will be tied to the budget, which is scheduled for December 15th. 
Perfect. Commissioner Edwards, anything else before we adjourn? No, that'll do it. Thank you. Anything else? Zach, you were pretty quiet. <laughs> That's all right. That, that's probably a good thing. <laughs> he Thank was our you, lifeline. He was our lifeline. Thank yes. you, Dick. Okay. So it is 10.01. We are adjourned.